Good Thursday morning. Mets sweep the Reds six in a row. They continue to roll a, another loss for the Yankees, another series loss for the Yankees, and it's either concern or, hey, there's still 30 games over 500. The fan base, I believe, is split. There are some that are going nuts over what's happening with this team and others that look around and say, Hey, they're still tied for the Astros for the best record in the American League. They're still double-digit games up in the division, and they've been able to survive this stretch, and that's where I'm at. As bad as they have been with the injuries they have had, they're still in a great position to get that one seed, win the division, and do what they need to do in the postseason. But they got to get Stanton back. They got Rizzo back yesterday. And this team was really, really good, and it wasn't smoke and mirrors earlier on in the season. And I do believe they get back there. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Yeah, good morning, Eric G. Um, you know, their offense hadn't been pretty good until yesterday. They, I think they went like 19 innings without scoring a run. And then, of course, their bullpen implodes. So I, I don't well, know. They bring you know, in a Brayu who's I know. been terrible. It doesn't make any sense. But yeah. I will will say this. I'm kind of like leaning towards you a little bit in the sense that, you know, I'm not going to overreact to every little downturn in the season, especially when the team is as good as they are, especially when they have their full complement of players. Yeah. So, um, you know, they, they ran into a good uh, Seattle team, a team that's uh, trying to go for it. Uh, you know, they, they basically traded for Luis Castillo, and, you know, he pays dividends already now. Uh, for them now for me you know thinking about the Mets hey the Mets got a well-deserved day off today yeah which is really good for them and they finished off the uh, the Reds the way they should have and they got on them right on them early and uh, the two stars are involved in every facet of what's going on and now come the Phillies and that means Scherzer DeGrom and Bassett God, come on does it get much better than that no it does not now you got the Braves after that which is an even more important series than the Phillies again, than the Yankees. But at this point, there's nobody that is intimidating the Mets, maybe other than the Dodgers. So used to see man four at the Braves, two at the Yankees. Oh, man, this is going to be a tough stretch. You know, the Mets right now are the best team that uh, they're better than every team that they're going to play in the next few games. And that's including the Yankees because they're playing a hell of a lot better than they are right now. But yeah, I mean, we get to see the two big guns again. You mentioned it was must-see TV every single night that the Mets play in day yesterday, it's even more so when you see DeGrom and Scherzer. It's it's a special regular season. I mean, it really is. I'll get more text messages than I ever get from friends and family. There's more people talking about it when you're out and about. I mean, it's just it's just one of those years for the Mets fan that just doesn't come along all that often. Well, we often talk about how a team, uh, the worst thing a team could be is irrelevant. And that's anything but what the Mets are right now. They're, they're everything about relevance. And the thing is that they're the second best team in the National League right now, second hottest team in the National League. The hottest team would be the Dodgers. They're 16 and three in their last 19 games since the break. 16 and three. And Joey Gallo hits a bomb last night and helps them win a game. So it's, it's weird, but you know, that's what he did and that's what happened for them. And he's actually been a little bit better for the Dodgers than he was here for the Yankees. And then, you know, the Phillies are right on the heels of the Mets in terms of how hot they've played over the last, you know, three to four weeks. And they're on a four-game winning streak, I think. So this is, a, you know, this is really for those who know a, a lot about what's going on in baseball, this is when you got to beat your teams in your division. And you got to continue to do it no matter how far in front of them you are. They're playing good. You're playing good. you got the three horses lined up in a row. And this is, like I said, Met Heaven. This is, You can't ask for anything better than that. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be an intense day, intense couple days at City Field over the weekend. Uh, it's been like a playoff atmosphere. Every time the Phillies come in and both teams are good, it's intense because you get some people that travel up. I mean, there's going to be great crowds. They're selling out. It's going to be another awesome weekend. Yeah, the only one that's not going to be there is Keith Hernandez. <laughs> right, you know, refuses for, for to do the Phillies game. Refuses to do the Phillies game in a really weird situation. Bizarre. But, yeah. Uh, and, you know, and then, of course, we've got football. I know we do tonight. So yeah. that's going to be the main focus. I mean, the, for better or worse, tomorrow morning is going to be about the New York Giants because the Yankees and Mets are both off. The Jets play on Friday. So we're going to overreact to everything that we see with the Giants tomorrow morning. Well, like I always tell you every year around this time is not to overreact to any of it. It doesn't matter. None of this matters. Now, I think – that uh, Brian Dayball wants to see his players out there. And when you are a new coach mm -hmm. and you are inheriting a losing franchise, 
Uh, you want to put people out on the field and you want to see what you have. There's no real protection of anybody. Um, I, I even think Saquon Barkley is going to get the ball tonight, I would think. Uh, you know, Daniel Jones is going to play an entire quarter. You know, like guys, they're, you know, Justin Herbert's not playing. Joe Burrow's not playing. Aaron Rodgers is most likely not playing. Well, that's same, you know, same team, same coach. I mean, those right. are, you know, that's a totally so, different in, uh, instance. Right. So now the coach has got to figure out what the hell he's got. And, you know, you can watch all you want on the practice field, but you got to see it in real live time. And you got to see, you know, if Daniel Jones has got an ounce of what Josh Allen has, you know, I mean, that's as much as Brian Dayball wants to downplay the comparison, there's no way that you cannot compare, especially when you have worked with a guy for four years the way that he did with Josh. Well, that's the comparison. So. I don't see a lot of similarities between Josh Allen and Daniel Jones outside of maybe height. I mean, they're both really big guys. But what Giants fans want to do is they want to say, look, Josh Allen took a while for him to be in an MVP discussion a couple of years, and Brian Dable was a big part of his maturity. Maybe he could do the same thing with Daniel Jones. But you know, comparing those two, I think, uh, quite honestly, is unfair. Because there's Josh Allen is a different breed, man. Like, he's played unbelievable football. He went toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes, one of the most entertaining playoff games I've ever seen at the highest level of the position in the biggest games. And it wasn't his fault that they ended up losing that game. I mean, Daniel Jones hasn't come anywhere near that type of aptitude on the field. No, he doesn't. But but the the point that I'm making is that the coach has no choice but to to really sit and compare because – the coach was lucky enough to be able to be with one of the superstars in the league. Mm-hmm. And he knows what it takes to become that superstar. And he knows the personality. And he knows, hey, look, Daniel Jones has all the physical ability. There's no question about that. We all can see it. We all know that he's a really good athlete, albeit a little bit clumsy at times when he trips uh, in that game against yeah. Philadelphia. But, you know, he's also been a guy that has had to deal with all the different things changing around him where Josh Allen hasn't. Josh Allen has been in a stable system since he got there in Buffalo. And Billy Bean did a great job. uh, Brandon Bean did a great job of building around him and bringing players in around him when they didn't have to pay him. So it made his job a little bit easier. And, of course, he had Brian Dable as his offensive coordinator. So Daniel Jones is learning. And I can't even – I can't say it enough, and I can't echo it enough, just how difficult it is to learn a new system – as you're learning, your teammates are learning. And as you're on the field, the last thing you want is any shred of doubt in your mind about what each other is doing. And when you're learning a new system like this, that's what unfortunately happens. So there are going to be missed throws. There are going to be throws that look like, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing when, in fact, it could be the wide receiver who doesn't know what he's doing. Um, so I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see it tonight, but I'm not going to take too much out of it and say, you know, this is it. I got to – I got to see the first month of the season. I got to see what he looks like in a new offense. I got to see it over a period of time, and I got to see whether or not his players and his teammates uh, truly do respect him and are learning with him and aren't making mistakes around him that is going that are going to affect him. And you mentioned learning a new system is a difficult thing. How about learning a new system when it's your make or break year and you don't really yeah. have a contract or any idea of what your future is going to be next year in a market like this where people have been all over your ass from the second that your name was called at the draft. You had that on top of it. And, by the way, the patience has run out and people aren't giving him the benefit of the doubt. If you read all the reports from from practice and I know it means nothing to you but fans gobble this stuff up everything is offense was terrible really bad throws that uh, blue and white scrimmage that they had oh man what a miserable throw and it goes out on Twitter oh Daniel Jones threw three picks today the offense looked awful it's never been crisp the entire training kit those are the reports that are coming out of it because People, instead of saying, well, he's learning a new system and it's going to take some time, they're saying, man, Daniel Jones just hasn't gotten any better. I mean, Brian Dable is supposed to come here and uh, uh, snap his fingers and turn him into Josh (laughs) Allen, and it's not happening. It's not the way it works. Well, it's not going to happen, and it's not going to happen anytime soon because Daniel Jones is not Josh Allen. No. They don't have the same personality. It's not not even close in that area. But, you know, I I just think – there are players that seem to be really good players, at least on paper, that are around him. And I, I, I would just like to think that, you know, a guy like Kadarius Tony and a healthy Saquon Barkley will take some of the pressure off of him. 
Yeah, I mean, how about Kenny Galladay stays healthy and contributes too? He got a ton of money from the Giants. He was a big free agent acquisition. How about his ass gets out there and does something too? I mean, we never even talk about Sterling this guy. Shepard too. I mean, we never talk about Kenny Galladay. I mean, that was a huge acquisition last offseason. You paid him a bunch of money to be your best wide receiver. He made essentially zero impact last year, so I'd like to see him be a factor in this offense. You know, the other interesting thing about tonight's game is that it also includes Joe Judge. Yeah, that's right. Who's going to be on the other side? He's now an offensive assistant and a quarterback's coach for the New England Patriots, and Brian Dable spent a lot of time with Bill Belichick as well, so... There's a lot of incestuous things that go on in the NFL, so especially with a guy like Brian Dable has been a lifer. He's been in a million different places. He's got relationships all over the place, as he told us. You know, he's been in all sorts of situations. He's been on really, really bad teams. He's been on really, really good teams. He has seen it all, uh, and he's he's worked with a lot of different people, and there's going to be a lot of connections throughout the season. Well, Brian Dable worked with him and worked with him. He spent a year in Cleveland. He was over here, so we're going (laughs) to say a lot of that this year. Yeah, he's all over the place, and You know, interesting about New England is that their offense is now being led by Matt Patricia. So it's not Josh McDaniels anymore. He's now obviously the head coach of the Vegas Raiders. And there have been some growing pains in their training camp with their offense. Sure. So uh, this will be interesting to watch tonight as both teams uh, come into the game at least struggling offensively. Especially if the defense usually has the... uh, kind of the edge early on in training camp, especially when they're young quarterbacks or changes being made in terms of uh, style of play and all that other stuff. So all this stuff is kind of normal. Uh, I just watch both the offenses go out and score 14 points <laughs> at their first two uh, possessions tonight. So I football's back for us. I, I can't wait. It's going to be uh, great to watch it, especially with the Mets being off tonight. Yeah, and it's going to be a center stage for the Giants, and I'm ready for it. I know there's a lot of baseball fans that are just so locked in, and I understand with two really good teams in the Mets and Yankees, and it's their time to shine, and these two football teams have to prove it to us, but I'm ready for it. I love it. I eat it up. I, I watch the preseason games, at least when the starters are in. I'm into it. I, it's just... The, you know, the Hall of Fame game is like the one preseason game I don't watch. I don't think I'm ready for it then. But then after that, once the locals are out there, I'm totally into it. Well, you went to training camp, the, uh, you know, two days in a row. That's right, of and course. You, you were feeling like uh, you you felt it back in those days in Bellport. <laughs> like, yeah, the two-a-days. When you're doing the up-downs. Yeah, the, the double sessions. Right. Back in the day. We used to do stations. Did you do stations? Everybody did stations, of yeah. course. We used to do stations twice a day with the double sessions in the summertime. In the practices right. that you're no longer allowed and, to and, do, and the and the worst part of it all were the gassers at the end of the, oh uh, at the, end of the practice. Yeah, back and the forth absolute and back worst. And forth. Yeah, these guys don't have to go through that stuff. Yeah, There's they do. Yeah, they they still do that. Yeah, well, some of it gassers they're doing. I think some guys do gas teams st- still do gassers. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You know, it's just it's just that they don't practice nearly as long or as hard with yeah. hitting. Yeah, they you know you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> right. You have to have those giant puffy things on your helmets now, which yeah. is another situation. Yes. It looks ridiculous. Yeah, I know. And I know it's all about player safety. Uh, of course. That's it what is. is it. You know, you want to make sure you protect these guys as much as you can, but it looks ridiculous. It doesn't look like football. Yeah, it looks like bizarre. It. Yeah. Bizarro football. I'm trying to think. I think the first place that those things actually were being used, I think, were, were at Dartmouth. Really? I, I believe so. And they have... Their coach up there has a unique way of doing things, very different way of doing things. He's the guy who goes for it on all fourth downs. and No, I'm talking about kicks. practice and, and preparation. And oh, okay. That nature. Does, 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 does a few things that I'm sure that, you know, old school guys like me and, you know, maybe Bill Belichick would probably roll their eyes at a little bit. Yeah. But it's just a new way of doing things with these new young men. That's right. New young men. Yes. We're going to see some of those young men out on the field tonight. We've got the Mets and Yankees and Giants and Jets to talk about all morning long. Jerry Recco is going to bring you all the details from yesterday afternoon in his update coming up in just a couple of minutes. It's Boomer and Geo just getting started on this Thursday morning on The Fan.